Hello there CFA candidates, uh, my name's John Bone, it's the 4th of August 2020 and I'm here to give you a rundown on some of the momentous news that the CFA Institute uh, released today and that of course is the move to computer-based testing. We were already going there for level one but of course now level two and level three are joining the party. So let's have a look at the information that was released uh, today by the CFA Institute. So First of all, the June 2021 paper-based exam has been cancelled, so that is no longer going to occur. So the very last paper-based sitting for levels 2, 3 and level 1 will be the December paper. Now what's going to happen, what's going to happen uh, given that this paper-based exam has been cancelled? Well, level 2 and level 3 are moving to computer-based testing. OK, and the CFA is going to introduce that computer based testing exam for level two and level three in May. December 2020 paper based exams will still run. OK, but it's very much going to be on a location by location basis, according to regional guidelines. CFA Institute have been telling us that they're having a lot of trouble the, the, with COVID. It's so fluid. Numbers are going up in some locations, down in other locations, that they just don't know what test centres will run at this point in time. And therefore, they're going to take a, a daytime, a day, you know, a game day decision uh, according to local regulations. So if the local regulations say they can run, they're going to run that test centre. But if the local regulations say no, social distancing is in place, there's no no way you can uh, uh, run a big uh, test in, a, in a, an exam hall, then of course they're going to uh, not run that paper. So just be a little bit aware. It's going to be test centre uh, by test centre whether it will run or not. You may of course find that you've booked a test centre and it will run. Fantastic. You may find you've got a test centre and it won't run. And we'll talk about what happens uh, if your test centre doesn't go ahead in December 2020 uh, in just a little while. Now, of course, do remember that in 2021, all exams are going to be based on the 2020 syllabus, which is good news because it means all of the study that you've done so far, assuming you've done some, of course, is valid for the exams all the way throughout 2021. You should be getting an email very shortly from the CFA Institute if it hasn't hit your inbox already, detailing the changes that are being made and how it's going to impact you and what your options are. So look for your inbox uh, uh, for an email from the CFA Institute. Right. So what does it mean if you are a December 2020 uh, test taker? So you're, you're enrolled to do the December paper based exam. You've got two major choices here. Either you stick with the paper-based exam, okay? Now, of course, that then means you do have that situation where you don't know whether it will go ahead or not. So there is that danger around the December-based exam. Or you can say, hey, you want more certainty and you can move to 2021 computer-based exams. Now, for level one, if you're thinking about moving to computer-based testing, you have four windows in 2021. February, May, August, November. For level uh, level two, there are two choices, May and August. And for level three, there are two choices again, uh, and that is May and November. Now, if you do want to do the paper-based exam and you've uh, yet to choose that option, be aware that the registration for the December-based exam will close on 19th of August. So you, if you haven't enrolled for the paper-based exam, December 2020, that is your deadline if you want to take that option. If you're thinking about maybe not sitting the 2020 exam now, uh, paper-based exam, and you're thinking, hey, yeah, I'm going to move to computer-based testing. Notice you've got a much longer uh, uh, decision period. You have to make the CFA uh, aware of your choices by 20th of October if you're going to move that exam into 2021. Now, of course, I understand that a lot of you will be worried about taking the paper-based exam. What happens if the test centre is closed? And as we said, CFA Institute are going to make these decisions on a test centre by test centre uh, basis, according to whatever local guidelines are in place uh, as we approach the exam. Well, if yours is closed, number one, CFA Institute will offer you uh, a, a choice of moving venues. Now, given that we're in the middle of a COVID crisis with lockdowns, etc., how easy it's going to be to select a different venue and travel? Well, it might not be possible. So what happens if you can't travel to another venue, it's just not safe to do so? Well, then you've got the option to defer into 2021 and do computer-based testing. 
And also, potentially, you've got the op option to uh, get a refund of your exam enrolment fees as well. I will set out the changes to the CFA uh, refund policy uh, in just a little while. So what if you are registered for the June 2021 paper-based exam? As we've already mentioned, this no longer goes ahead. There is no June 2021 uh, paper-based exam. So if you are desperate, OK, to do a paper based exam, you enrolled for June 2021. Now your only choice if you want to do paper based is to move your enrollment to December 2020. And that is going to be possible, but you're going to have to make that decision before 19th of August. Alternatively, of course, you move to computer based testing. OK, so now with the computer based testing for level two and level three, both of them have a sitting in May. Then there's another sitting for level two or another exam window, I should call it really, to give it its proper term in August and another one for level three in November. So note, therefore, that level two is May, August and level three is May, November. And that's actually late May. OK, so not much different from the early June uh, deadline that you were working to anyway. Now, again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you've got until the 20th of October to inform the CFA which computer based uh, test you want to do, whether you want to do the May or August or the May or November. OK, remember, if you want to do that paper based exam, only way you can now do that is to go back uh, and do the December uh, paper. And of course, you've only got until the 19th of August to let the CFA Institute know about that. Of course, you will only be booked for the 2021 paper based exam if you're a level two or level three candidate. Level one uh, is already computer based testing in 2021. So why have the CFA Institute made this change? Well, of course, I think COVID looms large in everybody's life right now. The fact is computer based testing centres are smaller. Social distancing is easier. It is just safer. The idea of cramming, you know, 2000 uh, finances into a into a, a big exhibition hall and setting a pen and paper exam. Well, unfortunately, that's a thing of the past. And it is sad because you know, taking your exam and seeing the thousands of candidates in the exam hall, well, it was really a, a, a rite of passage to the CFA charter. You know, you met your, you felt part of a, a fellowship of uh, charter holders at that point. And of course, that's going to be swept away. Now, the good news, of course, is there are some real big advantages to you as uh, the candidate. So let's talk a little bit more about this computer based testing. Of course, from the CFA Institute's point of view, it gives them flexibility. No longer do they have to organise massive venues where they're going to put thousands of candidates uh, through a pen and paper test all at one time. So essentially, this is going to give them more flexibility to respond to global and regional crises in the future, more flexibility in exam setting. Now, the good news for you as a candidate is you now have flexible exam windows. So in other words, you have a 10 day exam window uh, and you can choose when you sit your exam. So you book your exam. So this is good news. If, if Saturdays you never really wanted to sacrifice your Saturday to the CFA exam, hey, do it on a Tuesday, do it on a Wednesday. So there is more flexibility now uh, in this 10 day window of when you'll actually take the exam. There's more centres globally as well, which is going to be more convenient for candidates. Uh, previously, when it was paper based testing, there was 192 venues around the world uh, where you could sit your 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 test. Um, as we move to computer based testing, that number goes up to 400 plus. So there's going to be a test centre closer to hopefully where where you live. And that's going to be really good news for people that don't live in major and uh, major cities. OK, so more centres globally. It's still going to be a very strictly moderated exam. So you get still going to have proctors, still going to have strict moderation. So again, cheaters will not prosper either in the old paper based testing or when we move to computer based testing. But I think one of the real big advantages for, uh, for the exam is it's moving in line with workplace practices. You know, when I worked in valuation, I never got out a piece of paper and a BA2 plus calculator when I when I wanted to um, when I wanted to value a company, I did it all on spreadsheets. And I think 
over time, uh, the idea that we're now on digital platforms will allow the CFA Institute to evolve the exam so it becomes more relevant to people's day-to-day activity. Now, it's not going to happen immediately. Initially, we're going to be back with the uh, HP12C or BA2 Plus calculators in the exam when it goes to computer-based testing. But I think in the long term, it's going to allow the CFA Institute to uh, essentially become more relevant, maybe build spreadsheets into the exam, things like that. And I think another huge advantage to the candidate is we're going to now have multiple sittings of level two and level three, two sittings a year, as opposed to the one sitting uh, that we've uh, always had in the past. And of course, the problem with the one sitting was if you failed level two or level three, you had to wait an entire calendar year before you could resit. We're going to see in a little while when we look through the options and the path through the CFA exams. Now, if you fail an exam, you're often going to be able to reset much, much quicker than in the past. So what about changes to the exam itself? Well, the exam length is going to change as we move to computer based testing. So we're going from six hours down to 4.5 hours. And those 4.5 hours are split again into two papers, just like they are right now with the with the paper based exam. So you're actually going to face two, uh, two, two and a quarter hour uh, papers at levels one, two and three. Exam formats are going to remain exactly the same as they are now. It's literally just a shift to computer-based uh, testing rather than paper-based. So level one is going to remain standalone multiple choice questions. Level two will remain with its item set format. So that's four to six questions in each item set. My gut feeling here is over time we're going to see the six question item sets phased out in favour of four question item sets. I think a four question item set is just going to be a lot easier to display on a computer screen. So I'm seeing, I'm expecting a trend uh, away from the six question item sets towards the four question item sets. But for the first uh, sittings in 2021, I'd be expecting maybe to see a blend of four and six question item sets at level two and uh, at level three. Level three, does the essay paper, the constructed response paper disappear? No, it doesn't. OK, so you're still going to have the constructed response, the essay paper. OK, and then you're going to have the other half of the exam will be item sets, just like it is now. Now, this might be good news for you. We always hear from candidates that are very worried about, can the examiner read my handwriting? Now, of course, the examiners are very good at deciphering uh, ele illegible scrawls by candidates. But nonetheless, if you were worried about this now, that's a problem that's moved, gone away, because you're going to be typing uh, your answers in the constructed response. So I certainly see some advantages for people with messy handwriting and certainly some advantages uh, as well to the poor people that are, are marking those constructed response at level three. Topic weights, i.e. percentages for FRA, fixed income, equity, economics, all unaltered. So they're staying exactly the same and you can find details of those on the CFA Institute's uh, website. Calculator policy, again, at first we're, we're just porting directly to computer-based testing. You are still going to need to take in a approved calculator and there are still only two approved for the CFA exams and that is the BA2 Plus from Texas Instruments and the HP12C from Hewlett-Packard. Right, so we mentioned these 10 day exam windows. So you're going to be able to book uh, an appointment, if you like, or a sitting in a, a computer based test centre. And you've got a 10 day window in which the exam will run and therefore you choose your date. Now, level one, of course, uh, there are four uh, windows a year. That's February, May, August and November. And of course, the February computer based uh, test is already the window or registration for that is already open. May, August, November opening uh, essentially shortly. And you can see they're going to open on the 20th of August for registration. Now, level two in 2021, there's going to be a May and an August sitting for that. OK, um, and you can see with level three, there's also a May sitting, but then November. Level two is really in a bit of a holding pattern for 2021. So you've got May and August, but then when we move into 2022, it will fit into a, a more regular pattern of February uh, window and August window. Now, there's some real significance behind that and in terms of retaking, because basically you can see that point we've got there. You may not register for adjacent exams at levels one and two. What does that mean? Let's take a level one candidate. If you were to uh, fail the exam in February, 
you cannot take the May paper. You have to wait a, a clear six months, which means if you failed in February, the earliest retake you could do at level one would be in August. OK, now level two in 2021 you can see we've got May and August uh, sittings. Now, the issue here is you haven't got that six month gap between May and August. So if you were to fail May 2021 at level two, you would have to wait all the way through to February 2022 before you can retake. Now, notice once we get into 2022, then the gap is going to be six months. So lovely. If you're a February exam taker, no problems at all. If you fail that exam, you could retake in the August. Now, notice with level three, even in 2021, we do have that six month window. So again, if you were to fail in May, you would be able to retake in November. So just note, therefore, with level two in 2021, if you failed in May, you have to wait until February. With level three, if you fail in May, you can retake in November. OK. I did mention there's been some change to CFA Institute uh, refund policy as well. Uh, refunds of exam registration fees are now permissible if your exam is postponed twice. So, of course, a lot of you will be uh, originally taking your or had signed up to originally take your exam in June 2020. So already that's been moved. Let's say you uh, are going to then do the December paper and that gets moved as, tw as well. Then your exams being proposed postponed twice and therefore your entitlement, you're entitled to uh, um, uh, a refund of your exam registration fee, okay, if you wish. Now, be careful, that is only the exam registration fee. Now, of course, you might remember when you were a level one candidate, and if you are a level one candidate currently, you paid two amounts to the CFA Institute. You paid an enrollment fee to enroll in the programme and then an exam registration fee. The enrollment fee, that's not going to be refunded. That stays on record. OK, uh, and when you decide to take exams, you don't have to pay that enrollment fee again. OK, so there are now going to be refunds from the CFA Institute if your exam is cancelled twice and you don't want to reschedule, uh, reschedule an exam sitting. What's the impact on all of your Kaplan products? Well, of course, uh, all of our published timetables for level two and level three classes, whether that is online classes or classroom based courses, those are likely to change, of course, because all the dates we've published so far were assuming a June 2021 exam. And of course, now we're working to a May, uh, a May uh, point for your first uh, computer based test at levels one, uh, levels two and three. Level one, of course, unaffected by all of this because we were already moving to that four window approach in 2021. So all that data is relevant. But if you have booked a 2021 uh, June course, whether it's online or classroom, then expect those dates to change and we'll be in touch with you relatively soon to detail the options. What about all of your digital sways of products? So uh, the LMS, what we call it, the learning management system. So this is things like the QBank. This is things like uh, uh, module videos, archives of classrooms, etc. Now, the idea here is, of course, we will extend those products to whenever you are taking the exam. OK, now automatically your products have already been extended to December 2020. OK, we will then now need to look at getting a process in place to ensure that you have those available uh, in 2021 if you go for a computer based testing option. OK, it's going to take a bit of uh, work on our end, a bit of head scratching on our end, because at the moment it's a manual process. But as soon as we've worked out how we're going to extend the product's life, we will uh, we will let you know and we will do that. So don't worry at all about your sways of products uh, expiring. We will make sure uh, they are with you all the way until the exam. We're also planning to run a Q&A session, a live Q&A session where you get to uh, submit questions to our, our tutor team and we'll essentially answer them uh, for you. And that will run um, over the next uh, week or so. So probably in a, in, a, in a couple of weeks time on that once the dust settles and we can see what the true implications for the exams actually are. So let's have a look at level being a level one candidate and now look at your options through the exam. So let's say I'm registered uh, for December 2020. Notice if you pass this, you can go direct to level two sitting for May 2021. OK, now, of course, a lot of candidates will be worried in that situation. Hey, if I take the December paper, I'm not going to get my results to January. Have I got enough time to study for level two in May? Well, 
Just be aware that Swayze Weed Run jumpstart packages, and this gives you early access to uh, the first topic area in the Swayze notes, early access to the Q Bank, early access uh, to online classes, and that's free of charge. The idea is you can take us up on that offer before you receive your level one results, if you want to get started with your level two studies uh, before those results come out. So watch that, watch out for jumpstart packages available if you want to get started with your studies immediately after the December exam. So notice if I pass the December level one exam, I can go on to CFA level two in May. And if I pass the exam in May, I've got the six month gap to November 2021, so I can take CFA level three. Holy cow, level one in December 2020, level three by November 2021, you've just wrapped three levels of the CFA up in less than one calendar year. But what a calendar year that would be, my God, if you have any hair left by the end of that process, you know, I think that's going to turn it grey and make it fall out. You know, if, if I think you can go down that route, you should get a, a special charter, the CFA Gold Charter. It would be a very tough uh, year of study, wouldn't it? OK, now, if you do fail in December 2020, then, of course, there is a February level one exam. But the problem is that's not six months uh, away from the December exam. So you can't take that. So the earliest you'd be able to do a retake of level one would be the May uh, exam window. OK, look as well, if you did pass level one and then went to level two for May 2021, if you fail that, Again, problem is the August level two exam window is not six months away, so you can't take that. So you'd have to wait until February 2022. Okay, let's say you take the computer based option at level one. So you may be taking it in February. If you pass in February, fantastic, you can go on to level two. That wouldn't be in May. Again, you haven't got that six month gap. So the earliest level two uh, window you'd be able to take advantage of would be the August uh, paper. If you did pass level two in August 2021, then of course you can't do the November level three exam because you haven't got that six month window, uh, six month gap. So you, the earliest level three you'd be able to do would be May 2022. Also notice if you did fail that level two in August, uh, August 2021, then the next sitting would be available in February 2022. Likewise, if you fail the level one uh, paper in February 2021, remember you can't do the May sitting, not six month gap. So the earliest retake at level one you'd be able to do would be August 2021. OK, final set of options that we've got here is what about deferring level one until <clears throat> until May 2021? Well, if you pass that, of course, can't do August level two. So you'd have to do February 2022 level two past February 22 uh, level 22 I can't speak February 2022 level two okay and then you could go on to November 2022 level three okay again May comes around too soon for you to be able to do that of course with level one if you fail the May 2021 then the next available sitting remember you can't do August so the next available sitting to you would be November 2021. OK, let's talk about pass if you're a level two candidate. So again, starting off with the paper based paper, uh, paper based test in December 2020. If you pass that, then level three is available to you from May onwards. OK, so you can either do the May or uh, November papers within 2021. Now, of course, if you don't pass the level three paper in 2021, then you're going to have to wait until November, OK, which is the next available exam sitting uh, for you. Notice there's no penalty there. You can do uh, the May paper and the November paper for level three. Uh, if you were to fail, you've got a six month gap between those dates. Of course, if you fail the paper based level two exam, then the next available exam to you would be level two computer based testing in May 2021. Remember, basic rule is you've got to have that six month gap. Alternatively, maybe you go for level two computer based testing in May 2021. If you pass that, then, of course, you can go on to level three in 2021 uh, itself. Again, you've got that six month gap. So you can go from level two in 2021 to level three in 2021. If you fail level two in 2021. Now, the issue is you can't do the August paper because it's not six months, uh, 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 not a six month gap. So you're going to have to wait all the way around until February 2022 before you retake the level two uh, paper. 
Okay, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a guidance there with level two candidates. And then finally, level three candidates. Here's your potential path. And all these infographics are courtesy of the uh, CFA Institute. So if you do paper-based level three in December 2020, well, of course, as long if you pass and you've got the work, relevant work experience, you will gain your, your charter, which is lovely. If you don't, if you fail uh, level three, um, 2021, then what uh, sorry 2020 the paper based one then of course 6 months would mean that you can take the level 3 computer based test in may 2021 so no penalty there uh, at all of taking the paper based uh, paper even if it's uh, you know the only other option of doing the paper based exam in december would be the computer based exam in may 2021 anyway so, of course, your other option is to defer until the computer-based test in May 2021. If you were to fail that, of course, remember, rather nicely at level three, you have got that six-month gap uh, between May 2021 and the second window, which is November 2021. Remember, of course, uh, poor old level two, guys, you haven't got that in 2021. You can do a May paper, but that means you can't do the August level two. Now, of course, once we move into subsequent years, subsequent calendar years 2022 and beyond then level two will be february uh, and august that would give you a six month window so you could fail february and reset august but not in 2021 so may to august not long enough so it does mean you level two guys have got to wait until february 2022 if you fail the level two cbt exam in may OK, hopefully that gives you a little overview of what's happening and what this momentous news uh, has been. As I said, it's tinged with a little sadness for me. The idea of those epic scale uh, exam centres. And I did my exams uh, in London in the Excel Centre. And I just remember every uh, conference um, exhibition hall in that building was essentially... Um, a, a, a test centre uh, for, for, for candidates. It was just wall-to-wall -wall CFA candidates. And that did give you, of course, a feeling of belonging in the uh, CFA programme. And rather sadly, that, of course, is disappearing. But remember, the big advantage to you guys is shorter exam, nice, flexible exam windows, and, of course, uh, the idea that you can resit within a calendar year. Remember, that's not available at level two yet, but will be. And it was already going to be there at level one and level three. OK, thank you very much for listening.